vegetables. Oh, Rosa, thank you. You saved my life. Well, it's all I had in my freezer. Now, I'm not sure what it is, because the wrapper's torn off. But I know it's a vegetable. Yeah? How do you know it's a vegetable? Well, because the only thing left in the box is this giant green toe. <laughs> cauliflower. Cauliflower. I don't even like cauliflower. What's cauliflower doing in my freezer? Oh, I remember. I was making dinner for a guy, and he asked me what he could bring. And I told him, listen, we're having fish, so you should bring something that's white and chilled. <laughs> <laughs> Who's coming to dinner? Ross Nelson. The anchor man from Channel 8? Yeah. Where'd you meet him? Oh, at the awards dinner. Boy, not only does Channel 8 have the best ratings in town, they win all the awards, too. Ross won three. Best coverage, best feature story, and outstanding editorial achievement. How'd he do in the swimsuit competition? <laughs> if they'd had one, he would have won it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Listen, Mayor, how does WJM feel about this? I mean, you know, after all, he is directly opposite you, your show. I mean, is it dangerous dating the enemy? Oh, Rhoda, that's so high school. That's the truth. Listen, in high school, if a shark yet was ever caught even talking to a guy who wasn't a shark, they would drag her into the girls' room and bleach her bangs. <laughs> We're not really enemies. I mean, Channel 8 has their audience. We have our audience. It's just that theirs is huge and gross. Ours is small and tasteful. <laughs> Weird. Well, I guess I better be racing on back upstairs. <laughs> Hi, Roy. Hi, Mary. I hope I'm not late. No, no. Hey, thank you. Oh, uh, Rona, Morgenstern. I'd like you to meet Ross Nelson. Hello. Oh, nice to meet you. It's a great pleasure to meet you, really. I never miss your show. Never. I thought you never missed Star Show. And last night, I love that expose you did on the on the corruption in Councilman uh, Homburg's office. Oh, listen, that gave me goosebumps. Ted really? did a great interview with the cottage cheese queen. <laughs> It was really good meeting you. Really, uh, it was a pleasure. Same here, Rhoda. Maybe from now on you should watch WJM. They need the audience. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> Nelson. Oh, he's out on an assignment. Well, I'm supposed to have lunch with him. We should be back in a few minutes. I'm uh, Bill Bradford. Hi, I'm Mary Richards. Here's the background on the construction committee. Thank you. Boy, it's a lot of activity. No, <laughs> don't judge us by this. It's a slow day. Wow, would you look at all the monitors? Uh, monitors. They're right? called monitors. We use them to watch all the other news shows. Right, right. You know. See who's getting a jump on a story. Yes, I know, I know. I work in the newsroom at WJM. <laughs> You're not kidding. How come you don't have a WJM monitor up there? I mean, we certainly get our share of stories, too. We used to monitor you. But you know uh, how Ted Baxter is? A crowd would gather, everybody would start to laugh, and then nobody would get any work done. <laughs> Excuse me. Bill, one of our stringers just phoned in with a tip. A freighter hit a sandbar on the Mississippi River about 20 miles south here, and it's sinking. Now, they're trying to get the men off. Now, nobody else in town has this story. We get a mobile unit available? Yeah, number four just came back. All right, and we better send a helicopter and cover ourselves with some aerial shots. We'll lead with this. Let's hope nobody else gets it. I'll be back in a minute. I've got to take care of this. Sure. <laughs> Are your phone? <laughs> just a minute, it's just a personal call, but it, you know, local. <laughs> Answer the phone, will you, Mer? I'm on my lunch break, Ted. You get it. Come on, Mer. I want to sound the star answering telephones. They'd be real proud of you, Ted, for mastering a new skill. Newsroom. 
Ted, listen, it's Mary. Oh, hi, Mary. It's Mary. Ted, listen to me, will you? Because I gotta tell you something. Uh, will you speak up, Mary? We've got a bad connection. I can barely hear you. Ted, a freighter is sinking in the Mississippi on a sandbar. What? On a sandbar. No, no thank you. What? Well, this very nice gentleman here at the uh, Channel 8 newsroom just asked me if I would like to have something to drink. No, thank you. No, no. You just go ahead and, and take care of that big story about the freighter sinking on the sandbar. Did you hear that, Ted? Oh, I got that freighter on the sandbar. Ted! While I've got you on the phone, somebody stole the canvas chair out of my dressing room. You know, the one with my name stencil on the back? What if you had any clues? <laughs> Just because she didn't know the answer, she'd have to get angry. <laughs> You're talking about Ted's chair, Mary. I'm clean and I can prove it. Ted's <laughs> chair? Oh, that's so typical. Do you know that while this newsroom was worrying about Ted's chair, that a freighter vanished on the Mississippi? I doubt if the same guy was responsible. Oh, <laughs> Don't you ever ask yourself why we are always last in the ratings? Yes, and I've come up with what I think is a very good explanation. Fewer people watch us. Because they're watching Channel 8. Well, I always hear about Channel 8. What's so terrific about Channel 8 anyway? Mr. Grant Boyd, they have got an organization over there like nothing I've ever seen before. Hey, we're not so bad either, you know. Oh, but they've got... Uh, a lot of fancy equipment, sure. But that doesn't make a newsroom, Mary. You take away their helicopters and their mobile units and their walkie-talkies and their big budget, and what have you got? Us. <laughs> People. All the equipment in the world doesn't make a news team, Mary. I know. You've got to have the people. But that equipment is why they're always beating us to the story. Oh, there's more to news than just getting there first. It's what you do with the story, how you handle it. I wouldn't trade my staff for the Channel 8 newsroom if they threw in all the high-priced gear in Minneapolis. Oh, Mr. Grant, you're right. This is a great team, and yeah. I am really proud to be a... Come in. Hey, Mary. That's who's outside. Ross Nelson. Why did you let him in? Why couldn't you have kept him waiting outside? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But of course, Murray had to be eating a popsicle. <laughs> You're embarrassed, Mary. You're ashamed of oh, us. Oh, Mr. Grant, you know that I love you. It's Mary, let me tell you a little story. When I was a kid, my dad had a tiny little grocery store. It was a good store, an honest work, but I was ashamed of it. So whenever one of my friends would come to visit me at the store, I would always tell him my dad had three more like it. You see what I'm leading up to? That I should stop being childish and go out there with my head held high. Right. When you show them around the newsroom, tell them we have three more like it. <laughs> Ross, how nice of you to drop by. I wanted to apologize for standing you up. Oh, that's all right. W would you like to go to lunch now? I'll go with you. I think I'd rather see your newsroom. Where is it? <laughs> oh, have you met Murray Slaughter? Murray is our writer. Yeah, we've met. Uh, Mary, I'm going down to the coffee shop. You want a popsicle or something? No, th uh, thank you, Murray. No. Oh. Well, stay, Ross. Right. <laughs> just one writer. No, no, we don't have just one writer. We have another one. <laughs> oh, uh, this is our producer, Lou Grant, Ross Nelson. How you doing? Nice little operation you got over there at uh, Channel uh, 8, is it? Right. Thanks, Lou. You too. Oh, thanks. Go on, Mary. Show him the rest of our plant. Oh, no. I don't, I don't think Ross... Yes, I do. I do, do, really. Okay. The, um, that's our monitor. And, uh, well, th this is our <laughs> wastebasket. <laughs> but, you know, it's the central one that's used... You know, by, and they go, no, of course, there's a series of clocks up there. What do you know? 
around the world in the studio. Right? Who was that? Ross Nelson? Yeah. Dad, where are you going? No, I don't want to be here when he gets back. I mean, what will I say to him? He's number one. Tad, you're as good as he is. We're as good as they are. Tell me the truth, Lou. This is so important to me. You have no idea how important. Tell me the truth. Are we as good as they are? No. <laughs> I said the truth, Lou. Please. Yes. <laughs> really? Uh, Tad. Oh, okay. <laughs> I suppose underneath that tinsel and glitter, he's probably just an ordinary guy. I know I am. <laughs> of course, he'd be glad to meet you. What'll I say to him, Lou? I mean, I'm not good at making conversation. It's hard to me. Oh, sure, with chicks it's easy, but with other guys, I don't know what to say, Lou. Uh, all you have to do is just shake his hand and say hello. Then he'll say hello back and it'll be my turn again. <laughs> this has happened to me before, Lou. <laughs> All right, Ted, why don't you just start by saying, uh, how do you do, Nelson? It's always nice to meet a fellow anchorman. Hello, Nelson. How do you do, Nelson? How do you do, Nelson? <laughs> it's always nice to meet a fellow anchorman. Fellow anchorman. <laughs> I suppose I could say that. Yeah. Ben what? Uh, oh, yes, this is Ross Nelson, Ted Baxter. Ted Baxter, hey, what a pleasure. How do you do, Nelson? It's always nice to meet a fellow anchorman. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> the construction just collapsed uh, over on... Hold it, hold it, Murray. Hold it. Uh, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse us, Nelson. Oh, come on, Lou. I hardly think in this day and age... Oh, have... sorry, but we are competitors after all. Okay. Thanks for the tour, Mary. You're See welcome. you for dinner. Right. Okay, where's that bridge? Well, over on Grove Street. Uh, Mary, get a unit out there right away and cancel that film on that feature story we're running tonight. Uh, which one? Uh, the one about the German Shepherd raising the baby duck as her own puppy. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a bigger exclusive. This is a bigger story. You see, Mary? People. That's what makes a news team. People. Hey, where'd you find out about that bridge anyway? Well, the TV was on in the coffee shop. Channel 8's covering up by a helicopter. I just thought you'd like to know. <laughs> Mary, put back the baby duck. Right. Okay, now, I'll tell you why I asked you here. I want us to try to find ways to improve <laughs> the quality of our news. Now, first off, I talked to the station manager, and he said he certainly understands our problem. <laughs> Well, I was a little lonely in my dressing room, and I figured if you guys weren't doing anything, that maybe we could... Ted, we are all doing something. <laughs> so what are you guys doing? He's having a meeting. You mind if I watch? Watch what? Whatever it is you're doing. Please. <laughs> I don't want to go back to my empty dressing room. There's nobody to talk, nobody to have fun with. Please, Lou, I'll be good. <laughs> okay, Ted, you can stay on one condition. You keep your mouth shut, understood? <laughs> All right, now, where was I? Uh, you were talking to the station manager. All right, I was talking to the station manager. And he has approved an increase in our budget of $250 a month. Now, I know that's not a lot, but maybe we can find some good ideas of how to spend it. Murray? <laughs> well, uh, no, wait a minute. I, think maybe... I know I'm supposed to be quiet, but I've got an idea how to spend that money that'll make our news a lot better. All right, Ted, what is it? <clears throat> Give me a raise of $250 a month. <laughs> That's going to make the news better? Sure it is. You get what you pay for, Lou. I'm not saying I've been holding back. <clears throat> I mean, 
I've been giving 100%, but with the $250 more, <laughs> something really special. The lid will be off. <laughs> Ted, I, I know that you're going to find this hard to understand, but I don't want you to lid off. <laughs> Go ahead, Murray. You were saying? Well, uh, I have this one idea. Uh, I don't know if you're going to like it or not. Uh, ah, no, nah, you're not going to like it. Murray, come on. It might be a terrific idea. Go, see. Yeah, well, okay. Now, look, I was thinking that uh, we could take the money and buy an electric typewriter. I mean, just think. If you make a mistake, you can X out by holding your finger on the key. And you can change the typeface any time. <laughs> Why did you make me tell it, Mary? I didn't want to tell it. You're always pushing me, Mary. I knew it was a lousy idea. I never should have stopped. <laughs> I have an idea. It's something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and, well, now with the extra money and all. Why don't we find some students, you know, like college kids, who are interested in journalism and take them on as part-time reporters? You mean like stringers? Yeah, right, stringers. I mean, it wouldn't cost us that much money, and they'd be getting great experience. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, let me get this straight. <laughs> you want to hire a bunch of know-nothing teenage reporters? Bunch of 17, 18 year old kids to find stories for my show. <laughs> Can you believe your ears, Lou? Can you? Yes, Ted. But I'm gonna do it. Because I was a stringer when I was 15 years old. And I was a pretty good newspaper man, too. Oh, sure. 15 years old, but not 17, 18. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mary, been watching the show. Listen, kid, I felt bad about what happened last week, and I have been watching it every single night. Don't really watch it tomorrow night, Rhoda. Stick with Channel 8. Mary, what are you talking about? Listen, I'm watching the show, I'm enjoying it. it really, that's how I feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, what's the matter? Ah, oh, Rhoda, I don't know. It's just, for the first time in my life, I am embarrassed about where I work. I feel terrible. I mean, I hate it, but... Since I've been going out with Ross, I, I just feel so... Inferior? Inferior. It's funny how I guess that. I mean... <laughs> in my life, that's pretty big news, Mayor. You feeling inferior. Yeah, well, it's true. I mean, it's like finding out that Yule Gibbons eats pizza. <laughs> like the other day, I told Ross that we'd hired those college students as part-time reporters. Right, yeah. So now every time I see him, he says, so, how are things on Sesame Street? Yeah. I mean, ordinarily, Rhoda, someone says something cute like that, I laugh, you know, but now all I want to do is just wipe that smug smile off Ross's face. Oh, kid, you're really upset, yeah, huh? Yeah, because I, I feel sorry for all of us, Murray, Mr. Grant, me, Ted, even. You know, last night, Ross's closing story was an interview with Secretary of State Kissinger. Really? Ted's closing story was an exclusive interview with a minor bird that had been taught to say, good night and good news. <laughs> How'd they ever get Kissinger? I don't know. Took us two weeks just to get the bird. <laughs> In Phoenix, Arizona yesterday, a savings and loan bank was held up by a three-foot-two-inch dwarf. Please <laughs> say that the closed-circuit cameras were unable to get a picture of the hold-up man <laughs> because his head did not reach the counter. <laughs> Pardon me for laughing, but that's the first time I heard that. <clears throat> well, on the lighter side... <laughs> He mixed up his pages again. That was the lighter side. The French government announced today a new series of atom bomb tests in the South Pacific. <laughs> That's not that funny. Newsroom. Uh, hi, Ron. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, yeah, that really sounds interesting. Hang on just a second, will you? Mr. Grant. It's Ron. He's at the teacher's strike headquarters, and he says the strike is over. 
See, his old high school English teacher is on the negotiating committee, and she said that they're going to vote to accept the package. Ron who? Ron McGuire, one of the kids I hired as a part-time reporter. He sure? Yeah. Call strike headquarters and see if you can reach anyone there to confirm. No, Ron says that he's the only one who knows. Pete, go in my office and see if Channel 8 has anything on the teacher's strike. Right. Murray, we've only got three minutes airtime left. Oh, nobody's answering, Lou. Uh, uh, type up an intro for Ted. You know what we need. Let me speak to the kid. His name is Ron. Hello, kid. <laughs> Lou Grant, one question. Are you sure about this? He says he's sure. Mr. Grant? Huh? Channel 8 has nothing on the strike yet. Keep watching! Right. Ron, listen to me. It's very important to us that you are very sure. We're sticking our necks out on this. Ron, are you really sure? He says he's sure. OK, kid, hold on. Well, here's the intro. You're going to take a chance? What do you say, Mary? I'd say, let's do it. So do I. Let's go with it. Murray, get that intro down to Ted. Right. Mary, get the library to find a slide of the teacher's picketing. Right. Then get the booth to hook into the phone line for an audio feed. Ron, Lou Grant. All right, now listen very carefully to me. As soon as you get a cue from the engineer, you are going to tell your story over the phone just the way you told it to Mary. Huh? You're all hooked up. Okay, Ron, we're ready to put it on the air. We interrupt our scheduled news to bring you this exclusive late bulletin. WGM has learned exclusively that the teacher's strike is over. And now we're bringing you in exclusively by audio our exclusive WGM correspondent on the scene, Ron McGuire. Come in, Ron, with that exclusive bulletin. The, the teachers' union will announce at midnight tonight... Your the... time is up. Please signal when through. <laughs> The teachers' union will announce at midnight tonight their decision to accept management's package and return to work tomorrow morning. This is Ronald Brian McGuire, Jr. for WJM-TV at Strike Headquarters. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and that's it for tonight. This is Ted Baxter saying good night and good news. Anything on Channel 8? Well, they said from all reports the strike should continue for at least two more weeks. Yeah, and there's nothing on the wires, Lou. Nothing on Channel 8, nothing on the wires. Lou, look, what happens if we're wrong, Lou? We're not wrong. If we're wrong, we're wrong, that's all. All right, so we make a mistake, big deal. Yeah. I bet Channel 8 makes lots of mistakes. Right. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? Thousands of kids will show up for school tomorrow, and nobody... <laughs> And hey, what are we so down about? Right, what are we so down about? Yeah, I remember in the early 40s back there, when I was a kid uh, working on the city desk in the Detroit Free Press. It was Sunday, 4 o'clock in the morning. Somebody phoned in a story, and I had no way to check it out. <laughs> it was either... Print the biggest story of the century and beat every paper in the city by hours. Or kill it. I was a gutsy kid, so I decided to print it. You want to know what that story was? I'll tell you what that story was. The Japanese had just bombed San Diego. <laughs> It takes us to be wrong, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, Lou. Grant, look at this. It just came over AP. The teachers' union announced tonight that the strike is over. The strike is over, Mary. The we did it! Is we over. were right! Everybody missed the foot <laughs> off!
we're not teachers. <laughs> you on the phone, somebody stole the canvas chair out of my dressing room. You know, the one with my name stencil on the back? What if you had any clues? <laughs> Just because she didn't know the answer, she'd have to get angry. <laughs> talking about Ted's chair, Mary. I'm clean and I can prove it. Ted's chair? Oh, that's so typical. Do you know that while this newsroom was worrying about Ted's chair, that a freighter vanished on the Mississippi? I doubt if the same guy was responsible. Oh, <laughs> don't you ever ask yourself why we are always last in the ratings? Yes, and I've come up with what I think is a very good explanation. Fewer people watch us. <laughs> because they're watching Channel 8. Well, I always hear about Channel 8. What's so terrific about Channel 8 anyway? Mr. Grant, boy, they have got an organization over there like nothing I've ever seen before. Hey, we're not so bad either, you know. Oh, but they've got... Uh, a lot of fancy equipment, sure. But that doesn't make a newsroom, Mary. You take away their helicopters and their mobile units. And their walkie-talkies and their big budget, and what have you got? Us. <laughs> People. All the equipment in the world doesn't make a news team, Mary. I know. You've got to have the people. But that equipment is why they're always beating us to the story. Oh, there's more to news than just getting there first. It's what you do with the story, how you handle it. I wouldn't trade my staff for the Channel 8 newsroom if they threw in all the high-priced gear in Minneapolis. Oh, Mr. Grant, you're right. This is a great team, and I am really proud to be a... Come in. Hey, Mary. That's who's outside, Ross Nelson. Why did you let him in? Why couldn't you have kept him waiting outside? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But of course, Murray had to be eating a popsicle. <laughs> You're embarrassed, Mary. You're ashamed of oh, us. Oh, Mr. Grant, you know that I love you. It's Mary, just... let me tell you a little story. Little oh, Grant, one question. Are you sure about this? He says he's sure. Mr. Grant? Huh? Channel 8 has nothing on the strike yet. Keep watching! Right. Ron, listen to me. It's very important to us that you are very sure. We're sticking our necks out on this. Ron, are you really sure? He says he's sure. OK, kid, hold on. Well, here's the intro. You're going to take a chance. What do you say, Mary? I say, let's do it. So do I. Let's go with it. Murray, get that intro down to Ted. Right. Mary, get the library to find a slide of the teacher's picketing. Right. Then get the booth to hook into the phone line for an audio feed. Ron, Lou Grant. All right, now listen very carefully to me. As soon as you get a cue from the engineer, you are going to tell your story over the phone just the way you told it to Mary. Eh? You're all hooked up. Okay, Ron, we're ready to put it on the air. We interrupt our scheduled news to bring you this exclusive late bulletin. WGM has learned exclusively 
that the teacher's strike is over. And now we're bringing you in exclusively by audio our exclusive WGM correspondent on the scene, Ron McGuire. Come in, Ron, with that exclusive bulletin. The, the teacher's union will announce at midnight tonight... Your their... time is up. Please signal when through. <laughs> The teachers' union will announce at midnight tonight their decision to accept management's package and return to work tomorrow morning. This is Ronald Bryan McGuire, Jr. for WJM-TV at Strike Headquarters. Oh, gosh. And that's it for tonight. This is Ted Baxter saying good night and good news. Anything on Channel 8? Well, they said from all reports the strike should continue for at least two more weeks. Yeah, and there's nothing on the wires, Lou. Nothing on Channel 8, nothing on the wires. Lou, look, what happens if we're wrong, Lou? We're not wrong. If we're wrong, we're wrong, that's all. Right, so we make a mistake, big deal. Yeah. I bet Channel 8 makes lots of mistakes. Right. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? Thousands of kids will show up for school tomorrow, and nobody... <laughs> hey, what are we so down about? What are we so down about? Yeah. I remember in the early 40s back there, when I was a kid uh, working on the city desk in the Detroit Free Press, it was Sunday, 4 o'clock in the morning. Somebody phoned in a story, and I had no way to check it out. <laughs> it was either print the biggest story. Drink a drink. No, thank you. No, no. You just go ahead and, and take care of that big story about the freighter sinking on the sandbar. Did you hear that, Ted? Oh, I got that freighter on the sandbar. Ted! <laughs> While I've got you on the phone, somebody stole the canvas chair out of my dressing room. You know, the one with my name stencil on the back? <laughs> what if you had any clues? <laughs> just because she didn't know the answer, she'd have to get angry. <laughs> Mr. Grant, something has got to be done. If you're talking about Ted's chair, Mary, I'm clean and I can prove it. Ted's <laughs> chair? Oh, that's so typical. Do you know that while this newsroom was worrying about Ted's chair, that a freighter vanished on the Mississippi? I doubt the same guy was responsible. Oh, Mr. Grant. <laughs> Don't you ever ask yourself why we are always last in the ratings? Yes, and I've come up with what I think is a very good explanation. Fewer people watch us. <laughs> because they're watching Channel 8. Well, I always hear about Channel 8. What's so terrific about Channel 8 anyway? Mr. Grant Boyd, they have got an organization over there like nothing I've ever seen before. Hey, we're not so bad either, you know. Oh, but they've got... Uh, a lot of fancy equipment, sure. But that doesn't make a newsroom, Mary. You take away their helicopters and their mobile units and their walkie-talkies and their big budget, and what have you got? Us. <laughs> People. All the equipment in the world doesn't make a news team, Mary. I know. You've got to have the people. But that equipment is why they're always beating us to the story. Oh, there's more to news than just getting there first. It's what you do with the story, how you handle it. I wouldn't trade my staff for the Channel 8 newsroom if they threw in all the high-priced gear in Minneapolis. Oh, Mr. Grant, you're right. This is a great team, and I am really proud to be a... Come in. Hey, Mary. That's who's outside. Ross Nelson. Why did you let him in? Why oh, couldn't you have kept him waiting outside? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But of course, Murray had to be eating a popsicle. <laughs> You're embarrassed, Mary. You're ashamed of oh, us. Oh, Mr. Grant, you know that I love you. It's Mary, just... let me tell you a little story. When I was a kid, my dad had a tiny little grocery store. It was a good store, an honest work, but I was ashamed of it. So whenever one of my friends would come to visit me at the store, I would always tell him, I, watch what? Whatever it is you're doing. Please. I don't want to go back to my empty dressing room. There's nobody to talk, nobody to have fun with. Please, Lou, I'll be good. <laughs> 
Okay, Ted, you can stay on one condition. You keep your mouth shut, understood? <laughs> All right, now, where was I? Uh, you were talking to the station manager. All right, I was talking to the station manager. And he has approved an increase in our budget of $250 a month. Now, I know that's not a lot, but maybe we can find some good ideas of how to spend it. Murray? <laughs> well, uh, look, wait a minute. Maybe oh, I knew I was supposed to be quiet, but I've got an idea how to spend that money that'll make our news a lot better. All right, Ted, what is it? Give me a raise of $250 a month. <laughs> That's going to make the news better? Sure it is. You get what you pay for, Lou. I'm not saying I've been holding back. <laughs> I mean, I've been giving 100%, but with a $250 more, <laughs> something really special, the lid will be off. <laughs> Ted, I, I know that you're going to find this hard to understand, but I don't want your lid off. <laughs> Go ahead, Murray. You were saying? Well, uh, I have this one idea. Uh, I don't know if you're going to like it or not. Uh, ah, nah, you're not going to like it. Murray, come on. It might be a terrific idea. Go, see. Yeah, well, okay. Now, look, I was thinking that uh, we could take the money and buy an electric typewriter. I mean, just think. If you make a mistake, you can X out by holding your finger on the key. And you can change the typeface any time. <laughs> Why did you make me tell it, Mary? I didn't want to tell it. You're always pushing me, Mary. I knew it was a lousy idea. I never should have stopped. <laughs> I have an idea. It's something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and, well, now with the extra money and all, why don't we find some students, you know, like college kids who are interested in journalism and take them on as part-time reporters? You mean like stringers? Yeah, right, stringers. I mean, it wouldn't cost us that much money, and they'd be getting great experience. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. <laughs> you want to hire a bunch of know-nothing teenage reporters? A bunch of 17, 18 year old kids to find stories for my show. Got to be done. You're talking about Ted's chair, Mary. I'm clean and I can prove it. Ted's <laughs> chair? Oh, that's so typical. Do you know that while this newsroom was worrying about Ted's chair, that a freighter vanished on the Mississippi? I doubt if the same guy was responsible. Oh, Mr. Ted. <laughs> Don't you ever ask yourself why we are always last in the ratings? Yes, and I've come up with what I think is a very good explanation. Fewer people watch us. <laughs> because they're watching Channel 8. Well, I always hear about Channel 8. What's so terrific about Channel 8 anyway? Mr. Grant Boyd, they have got an organization over there like nothing I've ever seen before. Hey, we're not so bad either, you know. Oh, but they've got... Uh, a lot of fancy equipment, sure. But that doesn't make a newsroom, Mary. You take away their helicopters and their mobile units and their walkie-talkies and their big budget, and what have you got? Us. <laughs> People. All the equipment in the world doesn't make a news team, Mary. I know. You've got to have the people. But that equipment is why they're always beating us to the story. Oh, there's more to news than just getting there first. It's what you do with the story, how you handle it. I wouldn't trade my staff for the Channel 8 newsroom if they threw in all the high-priced gear in Minneapolis. Oh, Mr. Grant, you're right. This is a great team, and I am really proud to be able to come in. Hey, Mary. That's who's outside, Ross Nelson. Why did you let him in? Why couldn't you have kept him waiting outside? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But of course, Murray had to be eating a popsicle. <laughs> You're embarrassed, Mary. You're ashamed of oh, us. Oh, Mr. Grant, you know that I love you. It's Mary, just... let me tell you a little story. When I was a kid, my dad had a tiny little grocery store. It was a good store, an honest work. 
but I was ashamed of it. So whenever one of my friends would come to visit me at the store, I would always tell him my dad had three more like it. <laughs> you see what I'm leading up to? That I should stop being childish and go out there with my head held high. Right. When you show him around the newsroom, tell him we have three more like it. <laughs> Rod, how nice of you to drop by. I wanted to apologize for standing you up. Oh, that's all right. W would you like to go to lunch now? I'll go with you. I think I'd rather see your newsroom. Where is it? <laughs> oh, have you met Marie Slaughter? Murray is our writer. Yeah, we've met. Uh, Mary, I'm going to... He's having a meeting. You mind if I watch? Watch what? Whatever it is you're doing. Please. I don't want to go back to my empty dressing room. There's nobody to talk, nobody to have fun with. Please, Lou, I'll be good. Okay, Ted, you can stay on one condition. You keep your mouth shut, understood? All right, now, where was I? Uh, you were talking to the station manager. All right, I was talking to the station manager. And he has approved an increase in our budget of $250 a month. Now, I know that's not a lot, but maybe we can find some good ideas of how to spend it. Murray? <laughs> well, uh, look, wait a minute. Think, maybe. Oh, I know I'm supposed to be quiet, but I've got an idea how to spend that money that'll make our news a lot better. All right, Ted, what is it? Give me a raise of $250 a month. <laughs> That's going to make the news better? Sure it is. You get what you pay for, Lou. I'm not saying I've been holding back. <laughs> I mean, I've been giving 100%, but with a $250 more, <laughs> something really special, the lid will be off. <laughs> Ted, I, I know that you're going to find this hard to understand, but I don't want your lid off. <laughs> Go ahead, Murray. You were saying? Well, uh, I have this one idea. Uh, I don't know if you're going to like it or not. Uh, ah, no, nah, you're not going to like it. Murray, come on. It might be a terrific idea. Go, see. Yeah, well, okay. Now, look, I was thinking that uh, we could take the money and buy an electric typewriter. I mean, just think. If you make a mistake, you can X out by holding your finger on the key. And you can change the typeface any time. <laughs> Why did you make me tell it, Mary? I didn't want to tell it. You're always pushing me, Mary. I knew it was a lousy idea. I never should have stopped. <laughs> I have an idea. It's something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and, well, now with the extra money and all, why don't we find some students, you know, like college kids who are interested in journalism and take them on as part-time reporters? You mean like stringers? Yeah, right, stringers. I mean, it wouldn't cost us that much money, and they'd be getting great experience. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. <laughs> you want to hire a bunch of know-nothing teenage reporters? A bunch of 17, 